Let's take a look at some information and charts on Chainlink for Brave New Coin. So Chainlink is a decentralized Oracle network. Most importantly, in the DeFi world for pricing, price data, specifically in times of high volatility, how this works is they aggregate a bunch of trusted nodes and come up with a single price for ETH or for any pair that is being traded in the ecosystem a part of the decentralization process. You don't have uh, necessarily price discovery happening in one specific place. You have an aggregation of price discovery happening across many places. And the idea is hopefully you end up with the true price at that point in time. And they have parameters for degrees of error and thresholds of uh, deviation, that sort of thing, to sort of prevent Oracle attacks or things breaking down you know, let's say the ETH price on the Oracle is $2,000 right now. That's going to create a bunch of downstream effects where lending and borrowing goes haywire, stuff starts getting liquidated, and, and then it's just a snowball effect. So the Oracles play a big part in making sure the prices that DeFi relies on to function are legitimate and trusted. Now, if we look at the link token supply, I got to bring this up because I always have to bring it up. If we're, you're talking about anything in crypto, was it an ICO? Was it created out of thin air? Who owns a majority of the supply? Is it in circulation? Is it still being dripped into circulation? All that needs to be considered. This isn't necessarily a bullish or bearish metric to watch. It's just important to be aware of what's happening. I don't care why Smart Contract Limited is selling. All I care is that they are selling and they continue to increase their selling. And they're able to get away with this um, and not influence price because this is a small percentage of the total daily volume or total monthly volume for the link pair. Now, if this was a much smaller coin, it would be a different story. Are they still converting tokens to cash at an extremely high rate in USD notional terms? Yes. You know, just do some math <laughs> on 77 million. 500,000 tokens last month to cash, right? So they're making bank on this and they are increasing the rate at which they are selling. Again, this isn't an attack on Link, Smart Contract Limited, whoever, okay? It's important that you're aware that they're doing this, right? I don't care what your stance on it is. This is how much they have left to sell. This is how much is in circulation, okay? As long as we know about that, we're, we're Gucci, as the kids say. According to CryptoQuant, the link exchange reserves in the red here continue to decline even with this uh, increase ramping in uh, selling, okay? Again, just important to know what's going on. For me as a trader, it's important to be informed. There was an increase in um, the exchange reserves that didn't seem to have an effect here on price at all, and this drop in exchange reserves hasn't seemed to have an effect so far either. Anytime you're looking at data like this, it's important to know where they're getting the numbers from, which wallets they're looking at. Does this include stuff like DeFi? My guess is it doesn't. So just keep that in mind. For anything DeFi related, like the ETH exchange reserves continue to decline, but it's hard to really know what that means if they're just being traded on DeFi, right? One thing we can say for certain, though, is at least on centralized exchanges, it appears as though the link exchange reserves continue to dwindle which should have a bullish effect on price just because there's less for sale, regardless of the selling that they're doing. You know, it's just simple supply demand, right? If we look at the transaction counts uh, for LINK, the token, they've continued to increase. You can see sort of this floor, despite the, the epic rises in these transaction counts periodically. The floor since January 2020 is undeniably rising, so even their lows are becoming higher. So lots of demand, whether it's speculative or otherwise, contract-wise, oracle-wise, uh, for the token average transaction value is also rising, along with token price and volatility. Anytime you're, you see volatility, like we saw over the past week, you're going to see a ton of on-chain activity because typically there's a lot of fear in moves like a 75% drop from the top. And a lot of people are going to start selling the bottom or start selling long-term holdings. That's just human nature. So keep that in mind. 
So this metric itself isn't bullish or bearish, but to see transaction counts rising over time to me is incredibly bullish on anything. Um, NVT, inverse metric of economic activity versus market cap and active addresses here. Again, it's a picture that you want to see on any coin. Active addresses continue to rise and rise and rise. All-time highs were in uh, March, so a few months out now, but still incredibly bullish to see the floor for active addresses continue to rise. Um, you could read this as, or you could have read this as, a uh, bearish divergence on price versus active addresses. If active addresses continue to rise or continue to fall despite a rise in price, you could say that the price is mainly speculative and has a weaker support on the downside. You know, that's a potential way to read this. Previously, we had you know two higher highs in price with higher highs in active addresses, so it's not necessarily bearish on its own there. But NVT continues to fall. So to me, that says Link is rising in price based on rising on-chain activity. I mean, that's a one way to read that. And if anything, it says Link is undervalued here still based on NVT falling as far as it has fallen. If we look at uh, Google Trends for the term Chainlink Crypto, which hopefully teases away Chainlink Fence or Chainlink anything else, um, it's pretty clear that this is probably just Link-related stuff here. It did hit an all-time high in worldwide Google Trends on, let's see, a couple weeks ago, it looks like, beginning of May, and has fallen slightly since then. So again, you, you got a quick little subtle bearish divergence there. When you when you see these metrics fall or decline on higher prices, you know, that's a, a tell that there's a little bit of a weakness in prices at those levels, which is one of the reasons I even look at this stuff, right? So to see this decline to me matches price, it says, yeah, we're probably going to chill out for a little while on Link along with everything else. Looking at the one-year MA multiplier, and starting with the technicals here, this is the 365 MA on the bottom here. This is five times the 365 MA in the red, and the white line is the midline between the two. Historically, on any of these all-time highs, actual tops before extended periods of consolidation, Link has exceeded or tapped this value, currently at 90. This January 2021 cycle, Link kind of was unable to break that midline. It even retraced all the way down to the buy zone of um, the 365 MA. So it had a brutal drop from 60 to 1718, something like that. And you have to keep in mind, anytime you see a 60, 70% drop this quickly, you will almost always see an automatic rally to the upside, at least initially quickly, very quickly, even in March. You know, it, it took some time, but we got there. And it takes the time, it takes some time for the market to, to readjust. But a, an automatic rally should not be confused with automatic bullish continuation. So be careful of that. This probably will retrace to the upside considerably. It'll probably take some time for the market to regather its strength. But this still potentially will not result in further bullish continuation. So keep that in mind. You know, I said 60 by the end of the year a few months ago, and people were giving me crap in the comments below. Probably bots, but... Um, 90 is possible by the end of the year, you know, just looking at this, but it looks like 60 is where we tapped out as far as the highs were concerned. Here's the 50 and the 200 on the USD pair. Again, a subtle bearish divergence on price here. Higher high in price, an equal high or slightly lesser high in RSI. So there wasn't a lot of exuberance there or momentum on that high before we eventually rolled over. And much like everything in DeFi, it's Everything in DeFi is pretty close to its 200-day uh, moving average at this point. And for Link, historically, that has been an excellent bid zone or buying opportunity. Here's another way of looking at all the trend metrics. Uh, the pitchfork here, which maybe is one of the more textbook trends you'll ever see in a pitchfork. This is a multi-year bull trend. It has remained within the heart of this pitchfork for most of the price action. If this were to fall below the pitchfork, you could say, all right, it's over. It's all over for that bull trend. And even at 60, we got a little in the overbought zone, but previously we got extra overbought. Um, so it wasn't like there was no signs here that things were probably going to slow down. And it wasn't like there, will, there was no 
support levels on the way down either. These levels are dynamic and are changing every day, but it's important to say to yourself, okay, buy zone up here, or sorry, sell zone up here, buy zone down here. Definitely sell zone up here and definitely buy zone down here if you're convinced that this is going to continue. The yellow line is the midline and it'll act as a magnet for price. And you can see how it hugs the midline frequently, taps it frequently. It supports, support, support. And it looks like it's support again currently, but we'll see how that looks going forward over the next few weeks if it can get, get back to that overbought side of the midline. Looking at the daily cloud, it's been pretty noisy. You know, I'd rather look at the pitchfork, which I just keep up on my two by four um, trading view panel because this is all I really need to see. The cloud doesn't really help me too much because it's so noisy. It tells you to get out, get in and out of a trade too many times is basically what I mean by, by noisy. But again, here's that bear div. It's um, working its way into the cloud and or below the cloud soon. But overall, it's kind of been a jumbly mess. Um, here's Link BTC on a massive pitchfork. I've added a, a wing on this because this was the wing that it went to on the overbought side of things. And it matched the oversold side of things. Um, made this Adam and Eve type characteristic, which actually reached its target range between that 1618 and the measured move beyond the yearly pivot above the 200 day moving average. And now it's basically coming back to that level. If we zoom in on that a little bit with the cloud, you can see it loves its it loves its inverted uh, bullish reversals or Adam and Eve. So this was an inverse head and shoulders, Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve below the 200, below the cloud that broke up. So this still looks bullish, it still looks fine. Probably just needs some time to regather its strength. This was a head and shoulders up here that broke down. So historically, if Link BTC is going to do something, it's going to tell you well in advance. All of these patterns are multi-week, multi-month patterns that are telling you we're going to break up, we're going to break down, we're going to break up, and now we're in a holding pattern trying to figure out what's going to happen next. But it should provide plenty of opportunity for some bias and a trade there. If you look at Link ETH, Link ETH had this, I don't know what this is, but it's something. I guess a type of rising wedge uh, that broke up head and shouldered, broke way down, hit this triangle consolidation below the cloud, had a mega, mega opportunity to break up here. This was where it was going to break up if it was going to break up through the cloud, through the 200 day moving average. It couldn't. And now it's kind of stuck between all of this volume in the VPVR. So if I'm bullish on this pair, I don't want to see any, any lower lows at all. None. Even if it makes a bull div, you're risking falling to this next level down on VPVR. If I'm bullish, I want to see it pull back up to this level, back up to the 200-day moving average, and flirt with crossing above the cloud. So as this stands now on trend, it's definitely bearish. And if you are bullish on this pair, you're probably waiting to trade it until it's above 015, 017, something like that, because there's ton of, tons of resistance at this level. Lastly, I'll just mention the ETH BTC fund and managed DeFi portfolio that I trade for Tekami Capital on Enzyme.Finance. This is a non-custodial portfolio management tool where you can deposit ETH or USDC and everything is completely transparent. AUM, allocations, performance, all the trades I make, when I do them, they're on DEXs for how much. The funds are deposited in, into a smart contract, which I have control over as far as the trades are concerned. This fund is a mixture of FA and TA influencing trading decisions, whereas the managed DeFi portfolio is more FA, fundamental analysis oriented. And we did buy the dip uh, yesterday, deployed a bunch of uh, USDC that was either sitting in Aave or uh, newly deposited. So that's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.